the scripture tells us that, that it said, let us make, it emphasizes the majesty of the speaker. Furthermore, it was used as a plural for God to allow for later revelation of the Trinity. You see, God had already planned everything, and God was about to bring everything to light. So I think about man, and I think about my living. If God created everything and God created me, how am I living? All right, all right. Does my life, does my, does my life now honor God? Well. Does your life honor God? Are you putting God first in your life? Do you go to God when you need directions in your life? Well. Matter of fact, when God opens your eyes in the morning. Are you thanking God for allowing you to see another day? This, this book of Genesis is where it all begins. And he created, when he said, let there be light, God created that. God created the waters, and he separated the waters. Right now, we live where the waters behave, but they don't come over the land. God created that. He created the seeds in the grass, in the herbs. And he, the herbs yield is seed. And, and I like this one. I like this one. I want you to catch this. It yields its seed to the fruit tree. And it yields the fruit according to its kind. So that tells me that, that, that God's plan that I can't walk up to a, a peach tree and get a plum off of it. I can't walk up to an orange tree and look for a peach. So it tells, me, it tells us in the word that when God created everything and God planned everything out, it has its purpose. I don't need to try to recreate myself. I don't need to try to recreate something. I don't need to try to come up with a different style of preaching just to satisfy the times that we are living in. For the word says that I'm God and our change is not. I don't, I don't care about what's going on in the world. For God had created us for a purpose. Even though we're living in this world, but if we belong to him, we ought to live for him. So that's why it's important that to go back to this book of Genesis where it all began to understand who created me. And it says that, that, that God created man in Genesis 2 and 7 and he said the Lord formed man and out of the dust of the ground. The word form in its terms of a potter shaping a pot. And since man is made from the dust of the ground, he returns to the dust when he dies. He created man and fashioned a body out of mud and clay and transformed it into life. God did that. Nobody but God. Some of you young people may say, well, preacher, I, God didn't get me out of the ground. He formed the first man out of the dust 
of the ground. The first father. And we are descendants of the first father. We are the, the mothers are mothers are descendants from the first mother. For the Bible says that we will go back to the dust in which we came. So I'm trying to set the picture here. If I got to go back to the dust, to the one who created me in the beginning, how am I living? Is my living in vain? You see, we need to understand that, we need to understand that, that God didn't call us to live any kind of way. He didn't call, he didn't call us to do what we want to do. Matter of fact, he, he, he did not set us on this earth. Because we can read in this book of Genesis, and, and when I think about this man, I think about this man, and I think about Eve, I think about when you read this book of Genesis, it said man had everything. All that we're trying to get now, it said back then man had everything. Everything was there right there in the garden. He didn't have to work for anything. He didn't have to plant no ground. He didn't have to put no water on it and wait for it to grow. God put it there for him to enjoy. And it's the same way in 2021. He still has everything. But yet, we spend our time and countless hours trying to find something. You trying to find everything except God. And you wondering why it ain't working. You got to go back to the beginning. You got to go back to Genesis to get back on track. Because the Bible says that they had everything. And I was just looking at that and I was reading that. I said, man, what a relationship. Man had the first relationship with God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? You walking around in the garden and, and God just show up with you and he's walking around with you and he just having a conversation with you and, the, and it's cool and it's nice and ain't no, no, no global uh, 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 thing or no 90 degree days and, and 100 degree grays and, and you having a conversation with God? Just trying to put that in perspective blows your mind. That this man had that relationship with God. Well, the Bible says in, 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 in chapter 2 in verse 18, let me, let me read this. It said, the Lord, the Lord God said, it's not good for man that he should be alone. I will make him a help me. Now, we found out in chapter 1 that the woman was already in the plan. But we find out now that God, after he had brought man and formed man first, that now he's spent to make him a help me. And I always think about that. I think about uh, when I was young, dumb, and didn't know anything, and and, 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 and growing up in this world and, 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 and my first marriage and, and I had to be a man. I'm going to run things. I'm the boss of the house and stuff. And 
I don't even know the word of God, but I'm the boss of the house. But God created him first. That's all I knew. God created me first. I don't know the rest of it, but I know that part of it. But my point I'm trying to make that, that, that everything that we do, our life has to line up with the word of God. He created, and yes, the Bible says that he created man first. And I like what Paul, Paul, Paul kind of, Paul kind of brings us back down in, in, in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 11. This is in the New Testament, uh, uh, 1 and 4. He says that he, he, he's talking to the men because sometimes as men we can get the big head. He, he says that, that uh, uh, Paul is teaching the Corinth. He's talking to the Corinth church. He says, uh, 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 be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And that ye remember me in all things to keep the ordinance. See, a lot of times we can save ourselves if we just know how to line up with God. He says that as I delivered it to, uh, uh, to them, to you, but I would have you to know and, and this is key. I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. And that the head of woman is man. And Christ, and, 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 the, and the head of Christ is God. So in other words, in God's word, and in his plan, he has a plan. He has an order. Your house, you want your house blessed? You want blessings in your house? Line up with God. So many times now we are fighting in our households because the order is not in order because the woman now is trying to run and the man don't know his place and he doesn't know who he needs to bow down to. But if we get the ordinance right, and everybody's in their place. Then God blesses the house. And I know, I know, I know that many of us don't, we don't want to hear that kind of teaching. About the ordinance. About the man head over the household. And, and I understand, I understand, I understand that this time that we're living in. Some, sometimes there's not a man in the household. But you still, as Deacon says, you still has to have order. We still have to do it God's way. I was, I was in the office and one of my managers, he was talking to me and another co-worker and he wanted us to kind of change our hours and stuff. To uh, uh, We had some stuff going on. Right. And he said, well, you know, I need one of y'all to come in at 6 and the other to come in at 8. And he said, can y'all do that for me? I'll give y'all some time to think about uh, uh, how you're going to do that. And you can go home and talk to your wives. And so I said, man, I ain't got to go home and talk to my wife. All right. I'm talking to you. My wife ain't working here. He said, oh, well, you know, some of us got to go talk to our wife. I said, but not me. I ain't going to send my wife to work here with you. I'm working here. So tell me what you need me to do, and I'm going to make the decision what I'm going to do. And some of the other brothers, they heard that, and, and they heard what I said, and then they was coming out teasing me. Man, you, 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 you know... You know your wife run the house. And I told him, brother, I said, you must, don't, you must don't know what the scripture says. Well, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know what it is. I said, well, evidently you must don't know what the scripture says.
No, I don't run over her. But I'm lining up with God. I know my place in the house. I know what God expects for me in the house. I know that God expects me to be the priest in my house. I know that God expects me to give my kids the word of God. And if me and my wife can line up in the house that God gave us, then God can bless the house. But John 1 and 1 through 3 says, in the beginning, we got to go back to the beginning. We got to go back to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the same in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. So, again, I come back to my life. All right. So that means I have to pay attention All right. to how I'm living my life. All right. Because we already, read, we already understand in the word of God that one day, this life I now live right. is going to be over. And we understand in the word of God that when this life is over, that's not the end. I got to face the one that shaped me, informed me out of the dust of the ground, and the one that kneeled it down and breathed the breath of life in me. I got to face that one. So it would be wise of me and you to understand how are you living. I, I, I also listened to a preacher when he talked about he talked about getting baptized and, and he talked about uh, 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 your gods because you know the, honestly we supposed to have one God but if, if some of us have different gods, All right. and, and how do you know that, preacher? Well. Because some of us live unto God, right. and some of us create the gods that we want to follow. Well. And one of the things he talked about Christians, the watered-down Christians, All right. All right. and we can find watered-down Christians in 2021. We can find that now. It's all over. It's, it's, it's spreading like wildfire. Right. You know, they wants to, uh, it's one thing, I, that's why I love Pastor Monroe. I love, I, I love being here. Uh, uh, I'm praying just like a lot of times he's saying, God, give me 12 more years. I'm praying for him to get 12 more years, 120. I, I told him the other day, Pastor, why not go for 150? He say, well, if, they, if God give them to me, preacher, you know, because I love the fact that some people, they ask us about our church. They say, y'all deacons still having devotion up there? I say, yeah, we still having devotion. We still pray. We still saying hymns before we start. We still got Sunday school at our church. We still got a pulpit. At our church, we don't have a stage. We don't have hired singers. We don't have a praise scene. We got one gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It ain't 900 ministries in El Bethel. 
It ain't a ministry for flowers, a ministry for this, and a ministry for cleaning. It ain't 900 ministries. One ministry. One gospel. One God. And I love what Pastor always talk about. Why do I need a children's church? 